Oh yeah. All right. So, <laughs> as we <laughs> desperately try to catch up on our backlog, <laughs> you know, I, I did, we, we're seeing this two weeks after it comes out in theaters. About that, yeah. And the theater is packed. Pretty much sold out, yeah. Like, normally we joke about whether or not we're going to get an empty theater. <laughs> I wish we and did. And tonight... Because <laughs> there was some way that could make fun of this movie. Oh my gosh. Yeah, no, there were some jokes to be made. <laughs> but that being said, so we've gone and seen RoboCop. RoboCop, the new one. It's worth... It just worth getting this out of the way right now. I have not seen the original RoboCop. I've gotten so many... No! From that statement. But, uh... One of my fans slash friends recommended that I don't go see the, uh, the original before I went to see the reboot. Just so I got a completely unbiased take on it. So I decided to take his advice on it. Uh, you grew up on RoboCop, so... I did. I, I've, <laughs> I've seen RoboCop probably a couple dozen times in my life. Yeah, um, so I haven't seen it once at yeah. all. So I this, completely blank state. It's a different story. They take a different approach... There are obviously some similarities, but they definitely take a lot of different, you know, choices in it because, well, they're updating it. They're changing it to the way society is. It's no longer the 80s. Thank God. <laughs> God, let's face it. RoboCop is such an 80s idea. <laughs> It kind of is. It's like the Predator. It's just like, it's like, oh, Schwarzenegger from against a giant fucking alien. Now here's RoboCop. Let's take a freaking guy and mesh him with a robot. Room RoboCop. Have you ever noticed that uh, every, ma uh, every major actor who has gone into politics was in Predator? With the exception <laughs> of Reagan, who was president at the time. <laughs> No, there's a thought. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure yes, conspiracy theories go off the wall with that one. Anyway, back to RoboCop. This is a movie that's really dividing people, surprisingly. Like it's like fifth. It's kind of, It's like the new this year's Man of Steel, basically, where someone's saying like the new re like reimagining. It's awesome and it's really really cool. And other people are saying it's like it's not as fun as the original. It's it doesn't quite match up. Uh, for my completely unbiased take on it, I I kind of liked it. Does it have its flaws? Hell yes. Yeah. That being said, I liked it for what it was. Which was an action movie with at least a semblance of a brain. Mm -hmm. I will say semblance because subtlety is not a strong suit. <laughs> and we'll get more into that in a bit. Now, what did you think as someone who grew up on the RoboCop movies? So, overall, I think it's a pretty good movie. I, I was fairly impressed. Um, my big problem with it, it's a, it, it's it's something in the teeth, you know. In what? Um, way? So it, it, an analogy, you know, um, you go on a date, your first date with the person. Oh, you're you already up. You already wouldn't be less. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> you you go out on a date. You're you're on your first date with this person, uh, guy or girl, it doesn't matter, and they have something in their teeth. <laughs> it's not even necessarily something giant or anything, you know, maybe fleck a pepper or whatever. They, they have something in their teeth. And no matter how endearing, cute, nice, funny, whatever <laughs> they are over the course of the night, all you keep thinking about is that damn speck in their teeth. <laughs> I love that. That's brilliant. All right. That is what this movie was for me. Because while... The acting was, was pretty good. Yeah, actually was. The story, my disbelief fell into it. Yeah, yeah, I, a, I could, a bit heavy-handed you know. in a lot of places, but overall, well, I, yeah, I, no, I it's go definitely along with science it. fiction, so it's got a political message and whatnot. So sure, um, no problem. You know, yeah, I can work with it. The special effects were pretty good. Um, I really could have done without all the shaky cam. There was a lot of the, shaky really cam going on. I, uh, it made me like the last two fight scenes had the first... Like, the first fight scene with RoboCop really actually didn't have that much shaky cam. It was actually pretty fluid motion. It wasn't until you got to the freaking dark hallway scene and the pr the last drone fight that it really got irritating and kind of stroke-inducing. 
yeah, it's just, I mean, there, there were some, definitely some flashes of light and whatnot, but there were a number of times where, like, the camera follows them upstairs, and you can tell they did not steady cam that stuff. Mm, okay, I see what you're well, saying. Well, yeah, yeah, you can see the camera is bouncing as it goes up the stairs. It's like, why do you need that? Why? <laughs> that looks amateur. This is not the Blair Witch Project. <laughs> but no. Part two. The, the speck in the teeth for me is in the footage from the explosion and in the first time they pull away the armor oh, really and, and you see what's left of him yeah what he has and if you haven't seen this you know, spoilers yeah, but spoilers. you're watching this so you know there's always going to be spoilers um what he has is you know his head this weird chest cavity lung type thing going on and his left hand and from the first time he goes home through the rest of the movie he has his right hand <laughs> and even when he has flashbacks back to the explosion it shows the one that's damaged is his right hand and so the the whole time as I'm watching it's like okay the acting's pretty like I'm cheering for this I really want the date to go well <laughs> but there's that damn speck in the teeth like some inconsistencies they come and go real quick and you're able to let them go as something to laugh about this is gonna eat at me every time I see the movie <laughs> I didn't even fucking notice that <laughs> I'm not gonna be able to see anything else now <laughs> well to the point where I can tell they tried to catch it because then at the end of the movie when it shows what's left of him you have the head the chest cavity lung thing and his right hand so you know someone fucked up in the CGI and department and you're just like wait <laughs> 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 ah! <laughs> I like that that's the thing that eats at you the whole time yeah exactly it's, it's a little thing it's not a big deal in making the movie and everything like it's not gonna make or break an Oscar or whatever like it's just a little thing, but uh. <laughs> otherwise, I enjoyed the movie. I thought Gary Oldman's performance was really well done. See, now uh, that you're thinking about that, I'm imagining like the scenario in like the editing floor where they finally figured that out, and it's like, God damn it, it Jerry! <laughs> damn it, Jerry! Sorry. <laughs> well, it's too fucking late. Release dates next week. I'll fucking leave it there. No one's gonna notice. <laughs> right? I just like, ah. Uh, uh. uh. I was like, we gotta fix this. No, we can't. We don't have the budget to redo that explosion. Like, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like if they release, re we're already getting enough heat for this movie as it is because yeah, RoboCop uh, fans are still pissed off for one reason or another. It, yeah. Granted, it's not trying to be the original RoboCop. I've never seen it. Even I can tell it's not trying to be the original no, RoboCop. No, no, and that's in the movie's favor. Yeah, it acknowledges itself as a new story. Um, There's still the occasional cheesy reference. <laughs> but there are. They they do some you know tribute to the original. Yeah, as a way to acknowledge the fans. Yeah. And I, I don't think that that's bad. Um, I think that overall, it's not a terrible movie. No, it's not. I don't you know, think like, it is. Like, my big issue with the movie is just the ham-fisted way they keep forcing the whole robo-human thing down your throat. Uh, it, this is mostly done through an obvious, obviously satirical political show called the Novak Project, which is very a very thinly veiled version of the O'Reilly Factor, let's face it, except with more CGI and flashy minor Minority Report computers and Samuel Jackson. But it's basically the same fucking thing where they say incredibly biased opinions and they try to like wink and nod that they know it's that way, but it doesn't change the fact that it's that way and it's really gets obnoxious towards the end oh. where it's like it's kind of like the well this is the way we view it and if you don't feel view it you're wrong kind of political show and it that's unfortunately the, also the only side that gets any sort of argument in the case right so obviously they're trying to force on the fact that hey the other side is right but god forbid they get a word in edgewise at any point during the movie so that really got on my nerves because I am not a black and white guy in any way whatsoever I believe that everything is in shades of gray so any movie 
Not that, Shades of Grey, you motherfucker. You were demeaning my point. Well, come on. <laughs> You're totally a white guy. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> Apparently God is angry at me for that statement. <laughs> oh. Yes. So. <laughs> Some cards falling out. All right. All right. But that was the big thing that really just got on my nerves. Because, like... If you want to do that message, fine. I have no problem with that. But fucking iRobot was less subtle than this. Yeah, no, I bet it's part of the science fiction genre. Any science fiction movie that doesn't carry a message is technically doing a disservice to the sci-fi genre because that's have, the whole point of it, is to analyze and kind of go towards things. Now, that being said, that RoboCop's always been... It, it, it's a marketing ploy in a sci-fi message <laughs> because really prosthetics are not what's dooming the loss of humanity in the world. Yeah. You yeah. know, like... <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, um, it's like, here's kind of the thing for me, which is like, if you want to do a message, fine. I have no problem with that. Go for it. it it's all it comes down to the delivery. And like... There are some yeah. movies that, like, some sci-fi movies that have really, really subtle, like, uh, messages in there. Like, uh, I'm not sure, uh, does 2001 A Space Odyssey really have a message in general? So this is where I look like a horrible person. I've never seen Dude, 2001 A Space Odyssey. I almost fell asleep, but I still so, saw 2001 A Space Odyssey. <laughs> never seen it. Uh, <laughs> to right. my knowledge, there's... Uh, there's a scene with an, a baby. There's a scene with kind some of. monkeys and an obelisk. I, that's that's all I pretty much know. Yeah, the monkey takes out the first half hour to an hour of the film. By the way. Okay. Wow. Yeah, See, this is part of why I haven't seen it. Stanley Kubrick. Anyway. Yeah, no, I, I'm sure I, it's I mean, quality no, to cinematography, but let's face it, I enjoyed I, Frankenstein. <laughs> so... That's right there. Okay, I, no disrespect to the other one, Space Odyssey or Sandy Kubrick, but the first time I watched it, granted, I haven't watched it in a few, couple years, so I probably have a very different take on it now. Yeah. But, uh, granted, and it was also revolutionary. It's the first ever real, like, in space sci fi movie that ever came out. Like, this pre Star oh, yeah, yeah, Wars. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. But at the same time, it also took, like, a half hour for a fucking spaceship to land. So. <laughs> Kind of sitting there like, okay. No, we're still in the landing gear mode. Now it's very slowly descending. Still descending. Grab right. popcorn, come yes. back. Still descending. So, <laughs> no. yes. Let's get back to anyway, Robocop. Yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> Divergent. Yes. That's another. That's a topic for another day. But Indeed. Anyways, Robocop. Robocop. Now, what I did, like, uh, like I said, the, the performances are actually pretty solid all around. Uh, I don't know who plays uh, Douglas Murphy in this movie. Uh, but he, I thought he did a solid job. Uh, there were parts, initially, I was a little worried about him, because I felt I didn't quite feel like he was doing a good job, but the prosthetics probably didn't help <laughs> give him real acting range. He, he's an interesting character, because you have this whole struggle of man versus the programming and everything, but he's not a particularly emotional man to begin with. Yeah, I'd agree. Like, he, he's not... I mean, he, you know, he's got one brief moment of real, you know, he, it's almost all machismo. Besides, a couple freaks out at his partner getting shot. Yeah, pretty much, and that's about it. Um, a few tears here and there, a couple freak out moments, but uh, really, his emotional range is pretty limited. Yeah. Uh, but I love Michael Keaton. I thought he was great. Yes. I mean, it's Michael Keaton. Guy's charming no matter what he does. Uh, even Jack Frost, fuck it, he's still charming. <laughs> we don't like talking about Jack Frost, but he did it. We all know it. <laughs> it uh, no, he, he was yes, entertaining. Michael um, Keaton is the villain who's very business-oriented, but granted, he never goes into stereotypical bad guy territory, which is refreshing. Yes. And, of course, you have uh, Jackie Earl Haley as the more stereotypical villain who stole all, who stole his back brace from Matt Damon, I can only assume. Because yes. <laughs> it looks exactly like the one from Elysium. A little bit less tech, but yeah. A little bit less. Very it's like very, design almost, and all. Like, Other than that, it's like almost like identical. Which, honestly, he plays the bad guy so very, very well. Oh, it's Jackie Earl Haley. Exactly. Come on. He's, played, you know, he's been Rorschach like, and freaking Freddy Krueger. I think he can do a military guy. 
I don't want to talk about him being Freddy Krueger. <laughs> oh, bitter place, bitter place. Yeah, no, that's Freddy Krueger is one of the greatest dark comedies out there. Um, like that. That's what. Wait, really, we're talking about the original or the sequel? The original. The original. Not the remake. The original. Uh, <laughs> Like, horror movie, yes, but the dark comedy is what made those movies great, in my opinion. And the remake just did not carry that. Yeah, I don't doubt it. Um, so anyways, but, but uh, that no. being said, he's a great actor. He played the role really well. I was impressed. Um, as I said, it, overall, the movie's pretty good. If you like action movies um, and don't mind being fed a, you know, a, a pretty heavy political yeah. message... It's entertaining. Go see yeah. it. You'll like it. You know. It's like, well, I guess there's go over a little bit of like what the story actually is. Like the whole thing. It's something you've. It's something you've seen a million times in sci-fi, where it's about uh, a company called Omnicore that's run by Michael Keaton, uh, whose character's name I forget, who has like a military assistant who's Jackie Earl Haley and a few other people like Marking Guy, played by that guy from How to Train Your Dragon, yes. <laughs> and the Doctor, uh, who is played by Gary Oldman. And Gary Ullman. Gary Ullman is in charge of pro like a cyber prosthetic program who's brought into the RoboCop project when they decide that uh, a bill that's preventing drones and robots from being used in America, even though they're all over the place overseas, basically enforcing martial law, uh, is being blocked by a bill in the Senate. So their idea is, let's make put a man inside the machine. That will uh, change public opinion and the bill will be appealed or whatever. And yes. So that, that's why they make a RoboCop. That's one thing I like this movie. To give it credit... Everything that happens is logically explained in the rules of the movie. Oh, yeah, no, my suspension of disbelief works for this movie. Now, that being said, I have to admit, originally, I didn't plan to see this movie. And then I dragged uh, you into it. <laughs> uh, I, I had no plans to go see RoboCop because I, yeah, I grew up on the original with the remake. And after some of the remakes have just been so far from what the originals were, uh, I just, you know, I, I wasn't that interested. Until I saw this preview, pre-show at a movie theater thing, where I hear Gary Oldman call this the thinking man's action movie. <laughs> Here we go. This is a phrase I never expect to be uttered about an action movie. The thinking man's action movie. <laughs> Come on. I was prepared to go into this and hate it. And to hold a grudge against Gary Ullman for years to come. That one day I might be on a set with him so that I will find him. And I may not recognize him because he looks different in every movie. And I, I would just, I, I would admire the fact that I was getting to work with him. It would be a great honor. I would compliment him and tell him as much. And I would slap him for calling RoboCop the thinking man's action movie. And then you would tell him to sing that song from Quest from Camelot. I might. <laughs> <laughs> the one that has like no tuner rhythm. <laughs> so now my mechanical army, which is actual lyric. <laughs> he, he puts forward a great performance. The story is more logical than most. It is. There is some thought put into the movie. Like I don't know what you're talking about though. I was just why Gary's all his performance. He didn't yell at something really? once. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. It is entertaining. Gary Oldman yelling is like true. the is like. Internet memes born instantly every time Gary Ullman yells at something. <laughs> All you have to do is like uh, Google Gary Ullman yelling. You get that clip that goes everyone every time, <laughs> and it's still hysterical every time. But anyway, <laughs> so no, it's like Nicolas Cage. You go in there hoping that something insane shit's gonna happen. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but no, I I take up. I love Gary Oldman. He's like one of my favorite actors. But well, and I think part of the problem with that is that. Uh... The guy they had running Omnicorp. Mike um, Dean. Yeah, I think that he, him being in that position was the problem. As you said, everyone loves him. Um, <laughs> you know, even though he made Jack Frost and everything, everybody loves him. There were a number of points in the movie where I swear, like Gary Oldman was on the verge of yelling at him, and then he just realized that he loves this guy. <laughs> and he couldn't do it. Just like. Uh, <laughs> Oh, you get <laughs> that face. I can't be mad at that. <laughs> you and me get drinks later. Uh, we'll talk about backstabbing the robot guy <laughs> while we're there. <laughs> you know, which is pretty much actually fucking happens in the movie now that I think about it. Yeah. No, it's <laughs> like towards the end of the movie, complete spoilers, by the way. Uh, there's a part where they realize that. Uh, Douglas Murphy is like overriding the machine protocols and he's like solving his own murder, uncovered corruption, all, all the corruption in the. Uh, in this off in the what's the word I'm looking for, uh, department, 
and uh, they realize like, oh crap, if he figured this out, how much longer until he figures out what we did to him? And it's like, oh yeah, we gotta get find to get rid of this guy. So like, what's better than a hero, a dead hero? Again, it's logically, like there's a logical thought process oh, yeah. here. I did not expect them to say a dead hero. I was going for- I was expecting a legend, a martyr. I was expecting yeah. martyr. Martyr was yeah. what I was gonna think. Mar like, legend was the first thing that came to mind. And then martyr, I'm like, ooh, that's a good line. <laughs> what's better, you know, bigger than a hero? A martyr. That would have been great. A dead hero. Blame it on Jackie Earl Haley. I, no, honestly, I'm figuring the screenwriter for this, when he got to that point, he was a little bit, like, sleep-deprived, <laughs> and he wrote that and went, good enough, caught some Zs, came back and wrote the rest of the movie. <laughs> there's not a lot of moments where the dialogue just flops when it had a chance for a great line. Oh, yeah, I mean, there's you know, actually like, some pretty good lines in here. Like, I think some of my favorite part was when Douglas Murphy starts to kind of gain back conscience. It goes from, like... Monotone robo guy to like super fucking badass yep, <laughs> in like yep. 0.5 seconds and you start kicking everyone's ass. Exactly. <laughs> and that was fucking awesome. Like there were some parts where I was like, okay, say what you will about that this movie, but some parts are just awesome. <laughs> yeah. No, so yeah. screw you and your negative opinion. Yeah, but... Exactly. So <laughs> no. Overall, I enjoyed it. There are some consistency things that aided me, but you know. It's it happens. It does. It does. And there's no movie that I'm aware of that has no inconsistencies. Amadeus. I haven't seen it. Very. So it, it may have no inconsistencies. <laughs> I think it, you know, it fits into the category of you know everything I've seen has had some. So <laughs> Pretty much. I haven't seen it. So for all I know, 2001: Space Odyssey also has no inconsistencies. I'm sure you could probably find one in there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if anyone could understand it, you'd probably find it. <laughs> but like even hardcore intellectuals watch the ending for the first time and go, "What the fuck <laughs> was that?" Exactly. <laughs> right after so. they yawn. <laughs> You know. Pardon the yawn. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for all the that you have Space Odyssey fans. I've been up since 4 a.m. It's currently <laughs> it's 11 nearing. Yeah, exactly. So I'm tired too because I've been working all day and I got to work tomorrow morning too. Exactly. So so uh, we're tired. So that's why we're not as ah, we're still fucking talking. That's what we yeah, do. we are. We yeah. work. We make noise. <laughs> No, I'm not going there. <laughs> All right. Thought about it. Thought in my mind. He goes, no, reject pile. <laughs> and just put that away. Oh, boy. <laughs> anyway. <Yes. laughs> not touching that with a 50-foot pole. <laughs> I don't want to go. I want to I want to repeat Vampire Academy. Yeah, no, not again. <laughs> Sorry All about right. that again, by the way. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so what we're talking about. Yes. Uh, we're so. talking about. Uh, Robocop, we're talking about Robocop. Yeah, we're talking I about think something that specific well sums about it up. Uh, I, mean, I will say that I like the drone fight at the end. I actually thought that was pretty cool. Granted, they have blew the fucking shit out of him. <laughs> but, yeah, no, yeah, I was... The, again, that, that, that's probably one of the points where the suspicious disbelief starts to get stressed. A little bit. He got shot a lot. <laughs> Well, we don't know how much that hardware can handle at that. I mean, he's only a pair of lungs at this point. Well, we heard you. Okay, anything 50 caliber or higher, you know, can punch through the armor and prove fatal. Are we really supposed to believe that those giant freaking <laughs> robots are using less than 50 cals when the assault rifles the other guys are using are definitely 50 cal or higher because they say so? And that there's a huge gap in, like, uh misinformation at the very end of the movie where like what happens at the very end of the movie is that uh, Michael Keaton drags up his uh, wife and son uh, to the top of the tower and then of course they have their stand up Michael Keaton dies and then uh, Robocop falls over they do the fake death out uh, the fake out death thing which you know obviously is a fake out yeah you fade to black and then it just cuts to a certain period of time after they've broken god knows how many laws <laughs> and Gary Ullman, perfectly fine. Like, everything's perfectly fine. He's got a nice haircut. He's got a nice haircut. <laughs> and at no point is anyone like, hey, is there any consequences for this? You just killed the CEO of a major corporation. Is there no fallout for that? How did you get funding to make a new RoboCop costume? Why is nobody talking about this? Nope, just completely brushed over. Back to uh, Samuel L. Jackson having some bleeped out swears. <laughs> and, right. And of course, he had to get their one F bomb in there. Like the one PG 13 allowed F bomb at one point. Oh, yeah. Done by the, again, the fucking guy from How to Train Your Dragon. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Where it just goes, oh, we're fucked. <laughs> exactly. And then I, every time I hear that, I always think there's like some sensor in the back window. It goes, can we do that? Is that allowed? It's like, no, no, it's only one. We can do it. <laughs> 
It's allowed. Okay, we're good. Oblivion did it. X Men did it. <laughs> I just want to like. I get the feeling on set that day, just off camera, Samuel L. Jackson standing there going, he gets the F-bomb? How the fuck does that happen? <laughs> so, so Meanwhile, Sammy, the camera guy's like, shit, I'm still rolling. <laughs> <laughs> there is a delete scene I want to see. <laughs> no, and so we basically got Jamie Jackson and motherfucking bullshit is what this is. And <laughs> I actually have an I Sam Jackson app on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. I think on that note, yes. You got any final thoughts? Uh, well, we still got to talk about trailers. So. Well, yeah, no, but on the movie. On the movie, the I thought it was okay. I enjoyed it for what it was. Uh, I have not seen the original Die Hard, so there is that. So you are a liar. You've totally seen the original Die Hard. Die Hard, not Die Hard. <laughs> RoboCop. <laughs> hey, I'm thinking. Furthermore, about, I'm not certain what that has to do here. But. <laughs> I'm just saying 80s. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we're not talking. Oh, well, I guess we did mention Jack Frost. So holiday movies are in play. <laughs> <laughs> Point. All right, trailers. Yes. Uh, fuck, I don't even remember this one. Granted, I may have had it. Never mind. Uh, Brick Mansions. Do you remember what that one was about? So, Brick oh, that Mansions. Was... <laughs> We've got a cop and a convict are put together on a team to go into a walled portion of the city where some sort of gang lord is holding oh, yeah, the mayor be... and half the city hostage. Um, it looks like it's going to have some pretty cool action scenes and some fantastic parkour. No. I don't know what else it's going to have going for it. <laughs> That's about but what we honestly, gathered. just to see the like extended versions of the scenes in the preview, I may go see this movie. <laughs> Actually, the action's like pretty awesome, I'm not going to lie. Uh, very high-paced stuff. Uh, beyond that, of course, it's a movie you know exactly what's going to happen every freaking second of the movie. Exactly. It's Run of the mill buddy cop movie. You think they're gonna work out the differences by the end of the movie? I think so. Those little rascals. So, yep. so. Uh, we got a teaser for Expendables three. Uh, I like. Totally it. gave away the entire movie. <laughs> really? Well, I gave the cast. Point. <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty much the movie, yeah, isn't I mean, it? It's. Hey, it's worth it's it. It's gonna be Expendables. We're gonna see it. Yeah, I mean, like, it was. I mean, the Stallone and John Claude Van Damme fight. The last one was fucking awesome. Agree. So, yeah, um, no. if it's got Jason Statham throwing knives, I'm probably in. Yeah, yeah you know. <laughs> and whoever they get, get. I think there were rumors that Mel Gibson was in it at one point. Yeah, no, he was in the lineup there. <laughs> well, so. Uh, that would, that's fun. I would like to see just Mel Gibson go fucking crazy and stress us alone and watch him get more and more uncomfortable. It's true. <laughs> so we're going to see him go crazy and it won't be on TMZ. I see what he did there. All right. Yes. All right. Next one I got, I'm really look, I'm really excited about Captain America Winter Soldier. Oh, We got, we my got the gosh. new trailer for yes. this. It looks amazing. I can't wait because this is the only, not only Marvel movie, but superhero movie in general. That in between the original and the sequel has completely jumped genres. Yes. <laughs> yes, they definitely will. <laughs> um, this whole summer here, what we're looking at coming into the late spring, early summer, is DC even putting out a movie? I think they're still working on Superman 2. Uh, like, basically Justice League yeah, at this to point. To my knowledge, <laughs> like DC, I don't think they're putting out a movie yet for this summer that we've seen. Meanwhile, we're going to be getting... A uh, raccoon you know, with a machine gun. <laughs> but yeah, no, but, so we've got Guardians of the Galaxy, which was the only Marvel movie for the summer that didn't have a preview in RoboCop. Pretty much, yeah. I was really hoping for like the ultimate, you know... Yeah, and say so we got a worse trailer, but we'll get to that. Um, but yeah, so we, we, we've got Captain America Winter Soldier, which... I'm a huge fan. He's my favorite of the Avengers. I mean, if you um, know who Winter Soldier is, you know what the big twist in the movie is going to be. But for the sake of, we're not going to spoil it here. But uh, and they're really trying to ham it up <laughs> with this latest trailer, showing a number of injuries and whatnot. It really looks like they're going to, yeah, they, they're threatening to kill off uh, Nick Fury. Although they kind of gave it away how that ends because you see him in a later shot with just a bruise on his cheek. So I'm assuming he makes a recovery. You know. It all depends how many fights they have in the movie. Um, and really, if they kill him, it's not going to carry the punch it has anymore. Yeah, I don't... Because Marvel broke the big Jean Grey rule. I mean, for one thing, they established the Jean Grey rule with the comics. But they brought back Coulson. Yeah, that's true, they did. I mean, which, cool, 
you know, enjoying the series and all, but still, we've had it proven that in the Marvel Universe, death is apparently not permanent. Yeah, so, <laughs> you know, it, it's, yeah. it's going to be interesting to see where that goes. Yeah. But I'm excited for the movie nonetheless. Oh, it looks fantastic. Yeah. It's like, I love this, I like this, I love the spy thriller, uh, like political, like more political thriller element to it. I think yep. that's going to be great. I think it's a very big experiment for Marvel. Oh, yeah. They're taking a lot of risks this year when you look at it. They are. There's some ridiculousness in the trailer. I love the way they line up, you know, the way they call him the Winter Soldier. He's a ghost. You'll never find him. Then he steps out in the middle of the road and blows up an SUV. <laughs> Boy, howdy, he's hard to find. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got so. Yeah, it kind of defeats the whole stealth element, though. But in the very next shot, he grabs fucking uh, Captain America's shield in midair and throws it back. That's pretty awesome. Which is cool, yes. So, so I'm excited. I mean, I know who the Winter Soldier is. Uh, pretty much every com uh, Captain America comic fan knows who the Winter Soldier is because yep. he's a huge character character in the comic books now, even though he was introduced like less than a decade ago. Exactly, but if you don't know, we're not going to spoil no, it. I, so. I want to, but I'm not going to. I'm resisting yeah. the urge. So that looks awesome. I'm really excited. With uh, By the way, is there? I think they say that Black Widow is getting a movie now? Black Widow is in Captain America, Winter Soldier. They're recasting her. They're what? That redhead you're seeing, from everything I have heard, that's Black Widow. Well, Scar Scarlett Johansson played the uh, one in uh... in Winter Soldier. Yeah, it's Scarlett Johansson. She looks completely different. Yeah, Scarlett Johansson. Okay. Yeah. I, I had a, a you gave me a heart attack there for a second. I was like, they're getting rid of Scarlett Johansson? <laughs> this is the real reason I'm here is to just kill his dreams. <laughs> Next thing you say, no one ever love you. <laughs> Which is true. Anyway. <laughs> My depressing love life for another time. Anyway, so I must have a horrible image to people at home watching this <laughs> like wow this guy's a really depressed loser just dragging out friends to go see shitty movies <laughs> which is uh, accurate <laughs> oh <laughs> um, all right anyway let's move on next next preview all right uh, next week i we just literally talked about this yesterday uh the purge anarchy which it's it falls into the category of i can't believe they're making another Especially, like, less than a year from the last one that came out. <laughs> yeah, so, um, the concept of The Purge is an idea that I think is very... When I first saw a preview for the first movie, I thought, this is a brilliant idea. They just didn't execute um, it very well. Yeah, they, the movie didn't execute it very well. But then as I got to think about it, I realized <laughs> that this is an idea that is just not thought through. Yeah, I remember we had this discussion. Exactly. The problem is not the you know, the you know, whether or not the purge works. You know, you might actually get a much more functional society if everyone knows that one night a year for twelve hours, all crime becomes legal and they can do what they want. The problem is a week after the purge, when after you've killed the guy in IT who drives you crazy because he always asks if you turned it off and turned it back <laughs> on again, when you realize that man, it sure would be nice if someone was here to do his job. <laughs> Like, I mean, that that example was way too specific <laughs> to not at least be considered. <laughs> I don't have an IT guy at my job, so it's not an issue. Nine times out of ten, I'm the IT guy. So, <laughs> so you're the guy who wants to kill. It, well, you know, because I keep asking myself if I turned it on and turned it off again. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's called suicide. We often frown upon that as usually. Unless hilarious. it's during the purge. Wait, what? No, 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 never, <laughs> never mind. Onwards. <laughs> I, I granted, I, I liked the first Purge as kind of a guilty pleasure because I knew it was kind of a stupid movie. All right. But it was also, I, I, was, I said it yesterday, I'm going to say it again. It was also the movie with the most incompetent horror villains I have ever seen in a movie. Because I told Grant this again, I'm repeating myself. I apologize, but I can't. I can't stop myself. There's a part in the movie where literally there's a guy with a creepy mask, with a girl with a creepy mask on piggyback, and they're running, going hee 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 hee, and then the fucking main character comes around with a shotgun. They go, oh shit, and then take off running. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's so fucking hilarious. Anyway, all right. So another trailer we literally got just yesterday: Amazing Spider-Man 2. Uh, I've already seen my piece, so I'm gonna try not to be myself. What do you think? I'm excited for it. If there's a Marvel character I enjoy more than Captain America, Spider-Man is definitely in the running. It's just too bad on the oh. Avengers. I don't know. Well, it's, it's Spider-Man still owned by Fox. That's the problem. Well, yeah, and so are the X-Men, which means that, you know, 
Wolverine should never make it into the Avengers either, but tier. We never know. You know, like um Marvel is now involved in the making of these Fox <coughs> movies. And so I would not put it past them to you know, maybe collaborate at some point. At some point, not um, you know, I'm, later. I'm hopeful. I'm, yeah, <laughs> I'm hopeful. Someday. Uh, that being said, I like the current actor for Spider-Man better than the previous guy. Yeah, I'd say he's um, got, yeah. I feel like he's better at playing the nerd. Yeah. Um, but we'll see if that continues, you know? It's I have high hopes, but at the same time, I've seen, you know, Spider-Man movies. <laughs> it's kind of like when they make a Superman movie, I'm, not, uh, I'm like, ah, I'm Okay. <laughs> I'll go can't see wait to it. Spend, can't wait to see Man of Steel 2, Justice League. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I have a lot of problems with Man of Steel. I don't want to go there. Let's move on to the next preview. I'm like the only fucking guy that likes Man of Steel. Anyway. There's some serious issues there. There is! I still liked it, but anyway. Right. <laughs> uh, next one we have. I did not get yesterday, uh, surprisingly, was X-Men Day of Fu Days of Future Past, which is, of course, a big... Big, big gamble for the X-Men movies. Yeah, they, they're attempting to combine the two. First Class, which was stellar. Way better than it should have I, been. I, I, I loved that movie. Oh, yeah. Um, in no small part because of the amazing portrayal of really my favorite Marvel character, Beast. Beast, really? Oh, Beast was a role model to me, man. I've never been a small person. <laughs> Beast was the example to me that you know, even though you're big and you know, possibly strong, you can still be at least somewhat graceful, and you can be intelligent. True, but you didn't uh, hear what they're kind of doing with the character for this one. I've not heard yet. Uh, spoiler alert, by the way. Uh, very minor spoiler. Basically, they're making the Beast into kind of the Hulk. Well, we'll see where it goes. So, like, he's human sometimes until he gets agitated, then he turns into the Beast. Interesting. Yeah, so I guess so, that's I guess that's excuse. We'll see what they do with it. Effect. Days of Future Past is one of the greatest X Men storylines I've ever read. Doesn't only go for two issues. There's build up to it. Fair enough. Like there, that, there's that's... issues leading to it, and there's ramifications afterwards. This has the potential to be amazing. Unfortunately, because we're also bringing back a bunch of the cast from X-Men 3 Last Stand, it also has the potential to be terrifyingly horrible. Well, it does have Brian Singer as the director. True, and that does help. And so, yeah, I'm cur I'm really curious to see what they'll do with it. I mean, I love that they went with some like very unexpected toys for Bolivar Trask. Yes. So I really like they're going that direction. I'm not afraid. They're not typecasting, which is nice. Yeah. Because, of course, the, uh, I forget the actor's name, the guy from Game of Thrones. Incredibly talented actor. Oh, yeah. No. Really an actor. Amazing actor. Unfortunately, as much as I hate to admit, he, of course, does have some limitations that would ordinarily avoid the bigger Hollywood roles. But because of Game of Thrones, he's getting more recognition, thank God. Yeah, but and he deserves the recognition. He does, absolutely. He's an amazing actor. Yeah, I so, completely agree. I'm looking forward to X-Men. I'm hoping it's going to be great. And, you know, if it's not, I'm hoping it will be better than Last Stand. Either way, we have X-Men <laughs> Apocalypse to look forward to next. Yeah, exactly. So, there's, so. maybe they'll, Apocalypse will just kill everybody and we'll be happy. Yay! <laughs> if this really bombs. <laughs> yep. All right. And last one we got, which we're hoping for Guardians of the Galaxy. No, we got 22 Jump Street. Yeah. Now, granted, it's the guy, the same guy who made the Lego Movie. So maybe it is. Yes, it is the, the same guy who made the Lego Movie. It's an interesting note to make. I hadn't realized. Um, <laughs> I enjoyed the Lego Movie, so I don't. I haven't seen 21 Jump Street. Neither have I. But Grant says it's actually pretty good. Okay, I honestly, I saw the preview and I went, wow, that looks dumb. Yeah, that, that was my reaction to it too. So I, I didn't go for it. Uh, maybe I need to go see it and then maybe I need to go see 22. Uh, maybe. Maybe. A very, very meta trailer though. Yeah. Admittedly in the genres I tend to go see, yeah, it really doesn't fall in. So. Yeah, but you're my bitch now, so... <laughs> Hey, no. I'm kidding. kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I know you have way too much power over me. <laughs> so. This is getting really creepy. I think we need to wrap up now. <laughs> oh. <laughs>
you know what you're doing, don't you? It's amazing what happens when you hold a laugh for about two seconds longer than you should. <laughs> See? Uh, oh my god, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> I just learned a new trick today. Exactly. <laughs> Alright, it's 11.30, I'm tired, I got stuff to do at home, so we're gonna wrap up here. Yes. Uh, it's okay if you're really a diehard fan of the ro first RoboCop. This is not gonna necessarily change your mind. But if you don't really care, then it's fun for an hour and a half. Exactly. If you have to make the choice between this and Legend of Hercules, <laughs> it's not a hard choice. Although RoboCop does not have the advantage of a 50-foot lightning penis sword. You know, it's true. And with today's technology, that's kind of shocking. <laughs> ah, ah, on, on that, that note... note... Yeah, bye. <laughs> <laughs>